My name is Karen Vecchio. I'm the Member of Parliament for Elgin, Middlesex, London, and I'm part of the Conservative Party of Canada. I really believe if I look at it, it was just that journey, it was that next step. I was working in my community, doing different things, places like Habitat for Humanity and community groups like that, but I was also for working for the Member of Parliament, Joe Preston, for 11 years as his executive assistant. When I went there to that job, my plan was to work for the community. I love doing the work with the Canada Revenue Agency and immigration. I love those jobs, those challenges. But when my boss decided to retire, I had a number of people coming up to me saying, Karen, you should really run. I had never considered running for politics, but it was the support that I was getting from a whole bunch of people back in 2014 when the nomination came open, came, coming from different political parties, different genders. It was awesome. And so I decided to put my name forward and came out as the nominee. My proudest accomplishment, you know, there's so many things, but I think most of the things when I'm looking at when I go home and say, this was a good day, it's when we do something like passing a bill where it has unanimous party support or putting forward a piece of legislation or a study that has unanimous support showing that we've worked together. And in the Status of Women Committee, we've done lots of that. So I'd have to say a lot of the work that is probably some of the proudest is being the chair of the Status of Women Committee and putting forward unanimous uh, reports where we've all worked together and we've all are trying to work to get a change, finding that balance. the people, the people that I meet every day. In my constituency, I represent about 128,000 people. London, St. Thomas, the county of Elgin and Middlesex. And it's the people that I meet, um, wanting to do more for them as well, knowing that we have so many opportunities and so many challenges, that, but together we can do this. And I look at my type of leadership and the hope that I have and how I can instill that hope into others. And so that's what motivates me all the time is, how can we all move forward together? What did I learn about politics after becoming an MP? I think because I was in, in working for Joe for a long time, I understood the administrative part. I understood the behind the scenes part. But you know, when you're talking about the politics and what makes everybody else tick, understanding the other political parties. I understood myself being a conservative, what made me do certain things, but understanding the other ideologies and, and those beliefs, I think that was something that I learned the most because I have more frank conversations with people where we're really just trying to, to find, okay, where, what do we agree on? So I think that's something that until I was an MP, I never had those in-depth conversations and understanding the ideologies as much. One of the best things that uh, happened in the last in last year, in June of 2020, uh, June, I'm sorry, June of 2022, there was a bill called Kira's Law, and it was Bill C-233. It was a bill that was put forward by um, MP Dillon, who is the, a Liberal colleague. Her and Pam Damoff, who is the Public Safety Minister, came to me knowing I was the Chair of the Status of Women, knowing that I really, really believed in judges' training and the criminal justice system and the fact that it needs change, that we need to make changes. They came forward on a, bill, a private member's bill and said, Karen, we, we need your help. We went through committee, we did one hour debate, got into committee, got that thing passed in two, day, in two working days, got it back to the House of Commons for one hour debate, and it got it to the Senate in about a month. So the fact that we were able to, to peak uh, put forward a piece of legislation that was so important for judges training to make sure that judges understand uh, you know intimate partner violence domestic violence what happens to children's and abuse those things were so so important to me and that's because a whole bunch of women all from political parties we had the bloc we had the NDP we had the liberals we had our party all together working on a common goal and we got that thing through it's sitting in the senate and this week we should be celebrating the passage and royal assent I think the biggest challenge is um, really I think everybody has an opinion on what things are and sometimes opinions show themselves as facts. And so I think a lot of, right now we have a lot of times that we're con uh, when we're reading things they're opinions of people. We're not reading the facts. And so I think the biggest uh, issue with democracy right now is that people don't know the facts on issues. So we'll be arguing things where not everybody has um, 
the same information. And a lot of misinformation is out there. I'm challenged each and every day with misinformation. And I would have to say, if you're looking at my email emails, 75% of those are misinformation right now. That's a really huge concern. People just, you know, on the internet, you can get down a, you can get down a rabbit hole. Um, and, you know, I look at algorithms. I think algorithms is a huge problem when it comes to our democracy. What people are able to see, and those are really concern, those are great concerns for myself. Hope is what I see here. I, I get lots of hope for the next generation because I look at the people that I work with, I look at the portfolio that I have of women and gender equality and youth, and I get to work with youth across the country. Um, I'm inspired by youth every day. I know it's a very, very challenging time. We're coming out of COVID, where some of our youth have not for three years been socially interacting at school. There's been so many challenges like that. But I see hope because I, I see the recognition that there's challenges. There's ch lots of challenges. You know, we have a, an epidemic with drugs and homelessness and things like this, but I see people working together, and that's what brings me hope, is when we see something and we say, we need to see change. That's what gives me hope. Listening to everybody and try to be more empathetic. I would have to say that I was um, I was a very fortunate young woman. I had an amazing family, grew up on a farm, really great friends and family. And so, not recognizing that not every person has the same thing that I have. Not everybody has a mom and dad that they go home to every night with a, a warm meal at, at, at dinner time. That's not the normal thing for some Canadians. And so, being more empathetic and recognizing that we all walk in different shoes.